As already seen in the previous video, Muslims fast according to what a certain country may or may not say. However, according to Muhammad, it is not necessary to follow a country, an organization, religious scholar, or even their local mosque. According to Muhammad's advice found in the following hadith, even if one pious Muslim, and it has to be a man who said they had seen the new moon, and if this is validated by another, then it becomes incumbent upon the Muslim community, even if they themselves have not seen it. This declaration by the two people becomes binding on all Muslims wherever they happen to be in the world, which means they have to either fast on its first day or break it towards the end of the month. The same rule applies for any other events or festival. For example, in Mishkat al masabi 1978, which is also transmitted by other major Hadith scholars, such as Abu Dawud, Timizi, Nasai ibn Majah, and Darimi, where Ibn Abbas told a desert Arab coming to the Prophet and saying he had seen the new moon, i.e. the new moon of Ramadan, he asked him whether he testified that there is no God but God, and he replied that he did. He then asked if he testified that Muhammad is God's messenger, and when he replied that he did, Muhammad said, Bilal, announced to the people that they must fast tomorrow. Contemporary Muslim scholars, such as Yasir Qadi, albeit giving the appearance of applying the traditional understanding of the Hadith, do not fully commit to Muhammad's teaching on the subject. He says the new moon is to be seen physically by one trustworthy person. He avoids controversy by not specifying if it can be a woman, who are not allowed to be witnesses in this case. He also limits it by applying it to the Muslims of his continent. But instead of limiting it to only North America, in order to apply the aforementioned Hadith in its entirety, he should have said for all the Muslims around the world. The full link to his website is below. The relevant section from the lengthy article says, quote, Firstly, just for the record, in my humble opinion, the strongest fiqh position, meaning jurisprudential position, independent of other factors, seem to be that we should follow a visual sighting within North America. If one trustworthy Muslim physically sees the moon, and it was seen at a time when we know from astronomical data that it was born and possible to see, then such a sighting should be accepted for all Muslims of this continent." End quote. A few issues are raised from the previous slide. Muhammad never limited physical sighting to only a locality of Muslims. This is precisely the reason why millions of Muslims still follow Saudi Arabia's announcement, regardless of where they are in the world. Although North and South America are considered separate continents, why separate them and who decides, as they may also be viewed as a single continent known as America? And if this general definition is applied, what about the northernmost parts of the American continent, such as those near the Arctic regions and those near the southern parts near to the Antarctica if South America is included in the definition of the continent of America. Where do the borders start and end and who defines it? How does one determine the term piety of this person who happens to sight the moon? What if it is sighted by a pious Muslim woman? Why are her sightings not accepted but only a man's? How does this information get out and who is responsible for it? If Muslims elsewhere in the world do not follow this announcement, are they sinful and so on? The denouement or conclusion from this is what is clear is either Muhammad was not clear or his instructions that came to Muslims via the Hadith are not enforceable, which is self-evident because Muslims do not follow it fully, in effect making his words redundant. It requires people like Yasir Qadi and other scholars and countries, governments, such as Saudi Arabia, Morocco, etc., to redefine Muhammad's instructions, as there is no unified understanding of the subject. It brings with it an assortment of opinions and practices, including infighting disagreements with no unity at all in the absolute sense. 
There were also problems with calculations and the decisions were arbitrary in Muhammad's time. Muhammad himself was not clear and admits this in Sahih al-Bukhari 1913 where he says, we are an illiterate nation, we neither write nor know accounts. The month is like this and this, i.e. sometimes of 29 days and sometimes of 30 days. There were problems with moon sighting in Muhammad's time. Terms such as piety, trustworthy, are equivocal and vague. This is because one person's pious Muslim may be another person's impious Muslim. For example, in Sunan Abu Dawood 2332, it was not enough for Muawiyah to sight the new moon, a man who ruled the Muslim world from the year 661 AD, a man who became the first caliph of the Umayyad Caliphate after the death of Muhammad's son-in-law and cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib. Most Sunni Muslims generally respect Muawiyah, whereas the Shia Muslims detest him and see him as an enemy of Islam. The relevant part towards the end of the Hadith underlined in red says, Are the sighting of the moon by Muawiyah and his fasts not sufficient for us? He replied, No. Although in a previously mentioned hadith found in Mishkat al-Masabih, Muhammad took the information from one person who he did not know, and on the basis of this testimony instructed all Muslims to fast. Muhammad did not seem to indicate anything otherwise. However, in the following hadith, some Muslims use it to take the view every person should follow their own locale, country of residence, meaning it is not necessary to follow Saudi Arabia and Morocco or any other country if they happen to say it live in the UK or the US. In the introduction of the previous hadith, it mentions Syria being the location, but in the Arabic it is called Asham. Therefore the correct translation should not have been Syria because this term conjures up an area or country within a modern day geographical setting. Rather, the term Syria should have been translated as the Levant, an area that covers modern-day Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Israel, Palestine, although it can include other neighboring countries too. Geographically speaking, Medina's distance from the area called the Levant, Asham, is very close, with only a distance of 500 miles or less as the crow flies. This is hardly a far-off land analogy with Muslims living in lands with different time zones or continents as they are today. The real reason why Ibn Abbas seemed not to follow the sighting of the Levant was not because of the geographical distance, rather because of who sighted it. Muawiyah, who was the governor of Syria at the time, a position he held for 20 years before he himself made claims of being a caliph. This resulted in bitter infighting and vying for power, rival states were formed. There was enmity between the two men. Ibn Abbas was a staunch supporter of his relative Ali when the two fought against each other at the Battle of Sifin. As an ally, Ali had made Ibn Abbas the governor of Basra. So this hadith, when it is viewed in relation to the previous one from Sunan Abu Dawud, and the full historical context is studied it can be seen the decision to forego Muawiyah's testimony of sighting the moon and then keeping the fast of Ramadan, or not, was not a theological one, but a political one. In this Islamic article, it mentions how there was mistrust amongst major Islamic leaders. Ibn Abbas was accused of theft in some accounts. Here it uses the term defalcated, which is a fancy term for embezzled, misappropriation of funds, in other words, theft. It also mentions a lack of trust and infighting amongst early Muslims, those who were Muhammad's closest companions, such as Ali and Muawiyah, who were responsible for the killing of fellow Muslims. In an account after Ali accuses Ibn Abbas of theft, Ibn Abbas justifies taking the money away with him, lest it falls into the hands of Muawiyah and then counter-accuses Ali of committing a worse crime 
of killing Muslims for personal gains. Please pause the video to read the article. Its full reference and source is in the description. Briefly touched upon in the last video, a day before or late is significant because half the Muslim world could be fasting and the other half may not on a particular day. A day earlier could mean the culmination, i.e. Eid al-Fitr, could be a day earlier or later. Declaring the month of Ramadan when it is not or fasting on the day such as Eid is forbidden in Islam. It also affects the whole calendar and other festivals dates even one day difference impacts the whole calendar. For example, the 27th of Ramadan is a significant day, or the last 10 days of Ramadan, especially the odd numbered nights. So is fasting six days in the month of Shawwal recommended? Or the 10th of Zilhijjah is a day when Eid al-Adha is usually declared. So if it is only one day out, is it really the 10th if a day was miscalculated somewhere in the calendar? To give an example in relation to the Gregorian calendar, even if it is one day out, that would mean there is no agreement when the actual 25th of December is. For some, it could really be the 24th, whilst others are celebrating on their 25th, or the 1st of January, when it is actually the 31st of December, and so on. In other words, it throws the whole calendar out of sync. Not only are important dates lost within the miscalculation, but Muhammad did not know or chose not to share. It says in Sahih al-Bukhari 2023, narrated Ubada ibn al Samit, the Prophet came out to inform us about the night of Qadr. The two Muslims were quarreling with each other. So the Prophet said, I came out to inform you about the night of Qadr, but such and such persons were quarreling. So the news about it had been taken away. Yet that might be for your own good, so search for it on the 29th, 27th and 25th of Ramadan. Quran chapter 97 explains the night of Qadr, known as the night of power. In Arabic it is known as Laylat al-Qadr, as being better than a thousand months in terms of rewards. It is the most important night for Muslims, yet Muhammad either forgot or did not want to tell the rest of the Muslims because a few people were arguing. It is generally believed that the so-called night of power is in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Here is Tafsir ibn Kathir's explanation of Quran 97. Please feel free to pause the video to read it. The full link is in the description. From the hadith found in Sahih Bukhari 2021 and others, Muslims deduce, at least in this way, they get to worship intensely for 10 days in the hope of finding the night of power, as opposed to just the one night, thereby gaining more rewards. The flaw in this argument is, even if it is in the last 10 days, if one day was miscalculated either by starting Ramadan a day earlier or later, they could still end up missing it, because Muhammad said it could be on the 21st according to the above hadith, or the 29th night of the month according to Sahih Bukhari 2023, which was just cited. The most common day amongst Muslims is that the 27th night is the night of power. For example, it says in this hadith, Sunan Abu Dawud 1386, narrated Muawiyah ibn Abu Sufyan. The Prophet is saying, Laylatul Qadr is the 27th night of Ramadan. So every year in the month of Ramadan, depending on their stance on the moon sighting issue, and due to the miscalculations, controversies, and disagreements of whether it should be done visually with the naked eye or by the use of technology, one group of Muslims 27th Ramadan will not be another group of Muslims 27th Ramadan. Thus every year one group will not get the so-called night of power in the month of Ramadan. So in conclusion, Muslims no longer follow the Hadith of Muhammad where a new month or any other event such as Ramadan, Eid, Hajj are established by the sighting of one person. Instead, they follow the announcements of countries, local mosques, scholars, organizations, and so on. When it is convenient, however, or when there are disagreements, it is said people can make their own sighting and declare Ramadan or Eid according to each individual country or locality. Whereas when an analysis is done, it is done 
for political reasons rather than theological ones. Muhammad himself was vague about the calculations of lunar months, stating he comes from an illiterate nation. Terms such as piety and impiety are vague. Muslims cannot agree amongst themselves on this issue, with prominent Muslims accusing one another of impiety. A testimony of a woman is not accepted for declaring a new month. This is discriminatory as her gender has nothing to do with her ability to cite a new moon. Given the disasters explained in the previous video, such as citing the planet Saturn and claiming it as a new moon, the self-inflicted fines and the annual disagreements amongst Muslim scholars, it may be that a woman may do a better job than the imams, mullahs, male scientists and astronomers. Due to the calendar being out of sync because of the annual controversies of the start and the end of a new month, important dates, festivals are always disagreed upon. This means certain days that have a significant reward attached to it cannot be celebrated or worshipped with absolute certainty. In other words, one group will claim it is that date, whereas the other group will not. Such is the disarray, there is never any unity for the start of significant days such as the first day of Ramadan or its end, Eid, which are some of the most important days in the Islamic calendar and other dates. Such confusion from a religion can never be from an almighty wise deity.